afternoon and welcome to everyone who has joined us here today we are very excited to present to you one more of our webinars in the jamnabai narsi education series uh, we have had a plethora of speakers experts in their various fields taking us through topics that have been beneficial for us would have been so at any point of time and have particularly been so during this period of lockdown what started out as an endeavor to cater to the needs of the parent community by the three jamnabai narsi schools under the umbrella of the narsi munji educational trust we realize now has reached far and wide and special gratitude for the same is owed to mr sujay jairaj for conceptualizing and facilitating once again new age requirements i sonali gandhi am your host and i'd like to remind you attendees do send in the questions that you may have on your mind uh, using the q and a feature and it will be my privilege now to introduce the moderator for this afternoon's talk in turn the moderator will then introduce the prominent speaker and the topic at hand dr sujith bopardika an affable personality as anyone who knows him will agree is a prosthodontist and implantologist he is also a professor of the two specialties prosthodontics and implantology at a leading dental school dr bopardika wears many hats with ease the most notable ones being he is an active member of the jamnabai narsi pta a keen social worker and a passionate sports person family time together is possibly what excites him the most we saw evidence of that yesterday at our musical extravaganza with the bopar dikar band if i may call them that at their creative best without any further ado over to you mr bopar dikar dr bopar dikar thank you so much ma'am for your very kind introduction and i am awed with the kind of work the teachers have put in through this lockdown period as a parent let me tell you i am immensely thankful to each one of you all for the amount of trouble that you all have gone to make sure that our children keep our education going on i'd like to thank uh, the jamnabai narsi trust for this webinars they are wonderful uh, webinars which i have been following well i'll not take too much of the time because i think all of you all are very keen to listen to our speaker today Our presenter for the day is Dr. Meghna Thakkar, an accomplished naturopath physician practicing successfully in the state of Arizona for a decade now. Dr. Meghna, after completing after completing her bachelor in homeopathic medicine from Mumbai, moved on to the prestigious Southwest College of Naturopathic Medicine in Arizona to complete her doctoral studies. Dr. Meghna herself battled. from the complicated hashimotus thyroiditis herself and strived hard to find a treatment protocol that worked for her through a clinical experience and research work she realized the need for this because she saw more and more women in her practice who were struggling with this disease with the intention of helping other women with similar conditions around the world dr meghna also wrote a book Seven steps to heal your thyroid, which went on to become an Amazon bestseller. I have myself read the book, and I must admit it's a game changer in our efforts to understanding the thyroid gland, its disease, and the natural means to treat them. Today, she runs a very successful practices which focuses on women and their problems and helps them recover in a natural way without any side effects. Today Dr Meghna will be speaking on the mechanism of action of nutritional supplements superfoods in the backdrop of the covid-19 pandemic addressing the aspects of preventive practices immune boosting food with a lifestyle change I would like to just add what Sonali ma'am just said participants who wish to ask any questions i know there'll be a lot of questions because this is an enigmatic field not many people know about it please do use the q and a feature the question and answer feature which is there at the 
bottom of the Zoom app. And I shall be happy to pose those questions to Dr. Meghna at the end of her lecture. Without much ado, I'd like to transfer the further proceedings to Dr. Meghna with a small disclaimer that all the dosages that she meant are meant for adults only. Dr. Meghna, the stage is all yours. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Sujit, for your very kind introduction. Thank you, Sonali ma'am. Thank you, Sujay. I am extremely excited to be here today and share this important information with all of you. I'm going to share my screen so the participants can view that and that'll help with the presentation. So I hope that you all can see this. So my topic is immune boosting therapies. And I would like to begin by mentioning the six fundamental principles of naturopathic medicine. So you can understand where I am coming from. The healing power of nature. Our bodies have an inherent capacity to heal itself. So when you have a little cut on your hand, and if it's not bleeding, you don't have to rush to the hospital, right? Even if you leave it alone, it is going to heal by itself. So our body does have an innate capacity to heal. Identify and treat the causes. That's the foundation of my book. I suggest and follow treating the root cause of the disease rather than suppressing the symptoms. First, do no harm. I like to utilize natural methods in my treatments. Prevention is very important. We know prevention is better than cure. And we know that even in the present COVID situation, people with comorbidities like having heart disease, diabetes are more prone to the pandemic or acquiring it. So prevention is better than cure. Doctor as a teacher, I love to educate you. So that's what I'm doing right now. And the last principle is treat the whole person. I don't like to see people in parts. I think we are a whole being, body, mind, and soul. So I keep that in mind when I help my patients. So let's take you to Physiology 101. I want to tell you what is immunity. We keep hearing about immune boosting therapies and that's what I'm gonna present. But what is immunity? So this starts in our cells, right? We are made of trillions of cells. There is innate immunity and adaptive immunity. Innate immunity is our first line of defense and adaptive immunity is our second line of defense. Innate immunity consists of all these cells like the natural killer cells, macrophages, neutrophils. They are like soldiers. If you get an infection, they all jump in and want to start taking part in fighting for you. While the adaptive immunity includes the B cells and the T cells, which are the lymphocytes. I do want to mention that our focus is also on the T cells because this current pandemic is targeting and depleting our T cells. And I'm going to you know, drive your attention to the nutrients that are specifically going to help with that. So by understanding what immunity is, you'll understand the mechanism of action and how this works. This is another chart which mentions the innate immunity, which are our soldiers, and adaptive immunity. We acquire that naturally and artificially. Naturally, it's from the mo mother's milk during nursing, or if you actually acquire the infection, then you will be immune to it. Artificially, you can get it passively from certain injections or medicines that are transfused, or it can be acquired through an immunization. All right, so what determines your immune status? Like how do you know if your immunity is good? By a simple blood test, a complete blood count commonly called as CBC. 
So a WBC with differential will show you the different white blood cells and their ranges. So if you fall within good range, that is a good indicator of your immune system. Another thing I pay attention to is the 25 hydroxy vitamin D levels. We've all heard about vitamin D and its function in immune support. There is a normal range and there is a functional range. So the way I practice, we look at bringing the patients in the more functional range, which would be 40 to 80. Another important test is the RBC zinc. Zinc is a very essential mineral. We are going to talk about its sources further down in the presentation. But lower levels of zinc will affect your T cell function. So that is very important. So before I get into the treatment part here, I want to make a disclaimer here. I am here to educate you, but always consult with your physician or healthcare provider before using any of these modalities. These nutrients and supplements are powerful. And if you are on other medications, there could be like a drug nutrient interaction sometimes. So it's very important for you to understand this information, get educated about it, but always work with your healthcare provider. So I'm going to talk about three approaches, preventative, immune boosting, and lifestyle. The preventative, we all have heard a lot about it, seen a lot of videos. The media is doing a great job about the hand washing technique. To keep it simple, you want to wash your hands with soap and water for 20 seconds. You could sing your favorite song when you do that. If you can't, if you don't have access at that time to soap and water, carry a hand sanitizer, which has at least 60% of alcohol in it. Covering your mouth and nose when you see, sneeze or cough, that is very important. If you do that in your bare hands and then you touch another surface, then you're passing on the germs. But if you feel like sneezing, you can sneeze in your elbow or into your sleeve. That would be better. And not touching your face. When we say don't touch your face, you, I know you definitely feel like touching it. But on average, people actually touch their faces 15 times in one hour. So I know it's difficult, but right now it's important. Keeping surfaces clean. So the surfaces you commonly touch like doorknobs or the refrigerator handle or your kitchen countertop, those need to be cleaned regularly. Moving on to the second part, this is the immune boosting. Supplements, nutrients, foods to support your immune function. So we all have heard about vitamin C right? The oranges, papayas, strawberries. Kiwis are a great source of vitamin C. Green leafy vegetables like spinach and kale, bell peppers. So what does vitamin C actually do? It is going to shorten the duration of your illness, and it's also going to reduce the viral load, and that's why it is so important. I want to bring your attention to the dosing that I am suggesting in my slides. I am asking you to use one to three grams orally. This is not a daily dose. This is to support your immune system. When you're using any natural nutrients, the therapeutic dose is usually a little bit higher. So to achieve an immune supporting function, you need to be at this dose of one to three grams daily right now. That is a suggestion. Now, best is to get your nutrients from your food, right? Food is medicine. I always say that. But sometimes because of our soil being depleted from the nutrients, we are not able to get everything from our food. And that's why the supplements help. Another good way of using vitamin C or a good way of introducing it is liposomal vitamin C. It is better absorbed that way. That way the vitamin C is encompassed in a liposome. And if you take that orally, then you get more amount of vitamin C. Because usually, even if I tell you to use one to three grams a day, which can be a big range, you may only absorb 30% of it. 
because the rest of it is water soluble and it'll come out in your urine. And that's why you use a higher dose. But if you go more than five grams, then you may be sitting in the bathroom with loose stools. Okay. Moving on to the second vitamin, vitamin D. I know we ask you to go in the sunlight. It's the best source of getting vitamin D, but other foods like egg yolk, cheese, mushrooms. If you eat seafood, then salmon, those are good sources of vitamin D. 5,000 IUs daily is usually an average dose for an adult. My patients here, I usually recommend four to 5,000 IUs, but very importantly, I always check their blood work. Vitamin D, along with vitamins A and K, is a fat-soluble vitamin, which means that we can build up on the, these vitamins in our body. We do not want to cross a limit that it could be a toxic burden in our body. So that is why it's very important for you to do a blood test and use the right dose that is good for you, rather than using very high doses. Vitamin D also helps support our innate immunity, the first line of defense. That is how it works. Vitamin A. Vitamin A, like vitamin D, is a fat-soluble vitamin. When I say it's a fat-soluble vitamin, I want to suggest that you use it with a meal or a snack which has some fat in it, like ghee or like nuts or seeds or avocados, those are good sources of fat. And when you take this vitamin, when you're eating the fatty food, it's better absorbed into your system. Now, this is a very high dose of vitamin A, 10,000 IUs to 25,000 IUs per day. Regularly, I would probably recommend up to 5,000 IUs a day, not more. But this dose is required for it to help the immune system. Vitamin A, women who are pregnant need to be careful with the vitamin A dosing. This could not be a good dose for them to use. The good food sources are the fruits and vegetables, which are orangish red in color, like sweet potatoes, carrots, again, salmon, if you do eat seafood, milk, and eggs. Vitamin A is very important, not only to support the mucous membranes and the first line of defense, but also it supports the T cell function. So it's extremely important during this time. Moving on to zinc. Zinc is an extremely essential mineral at this time, and it can be taken in divided doses, 30 to 60 milligrams orally. The good food sources are pumpkin seeds, beans, legumes, lentils, and seafood. So a lot of our Indian diet, which consists of the different dals, are very high source of zinc. So your kidney beans, garbanzo beans, tuar dal, moong, all of those are good sources of zinc for you. You can sprinkle some pumpkin seeds on your salad as well. It's also available in lozenges. Lower levels of zinc affect the T cell function. And that's why when I mentioned the biomarkers, RBC zinc is a good test for you to do. And then dose your zinc accordingly. Selenium. Selenium is a very important mineral because it helps in the glutathione production. Synthesis of glutathione in the lungs. Glutathione is the master antioxidant. I talk about it a lot, even in my book. And right now it's very important because the glutathione production in the lung is essential because the current pandemic is affecting our lungs. So this will help the pro as an anti-inflammatory over there. So that's why it is essential. Brazil nuts are great to snack on. It's also present in garlic and sunflower seeds. Also cold water fish are a good source of selenium. It plays a vital role in the thyroid health. I see a lot of patients with thyroid problems and I use it in my formula as well because it helps the conversion of the inactive thyroid hormone to its active form, the T3. 
So let's talk about some foods here. Our honey is excellent. It's a good demulcent, which means it's soothing. It relieves the inflammation in the mucous membrane. So if somebody is having a dry cough or a sore throat, it's best taken even like a tablespoon of honey. Do not give it to children who are less than one year old. It can also be added to your teas. Green tea, chamomile tea, peppermint tea, add a tablespoon of honey. It's a great demulcent. It has antimicrobial effects. So it helps to fight infection. Garlic. Garlic will do wonders as well. So I know we use a lot of garlic in our foods anyways when we prepare Indian dishes. So I encourage you to add a little bit more. And when you crush the garlic, it forms this compound called allicin. And that is specifically important to reduce the inflammation and help heal, not only in the mouth and the throat, but it also affects your lungs. So it is that powerful. So use more garlic. Curcumin. Curcumin, our turmeric, you know, originated in India, but it's become popular worldwide. The picture that you see is the golden milk that they call here a nice cup of warm milk with curcumin or haldi and some raw honey in it would be the best thing for you to drink at night time. Curcumin is also available in capsules like 100 to 1000 milligrams can be used two times a day. It's available in lozenges. And in our Indian dishes, we sprinkle a lot in our food, which is great. It's a great anti-inflammatory but it has such wide usage, actually. It helps people with joint pain, it helps with the heart disease, it helps in prevention of cancer. So definitely use that haldi. Quercetin. Quercetin is a flavonoid. It's present in different vegetables and fruits, like onions, garlic, apple, grapes, berries, broccoli. What do these antioxidants do? They scavenge the free radicals, which is a process of oxidation, which is not good for you. And I'm going to tell you more about this later. But quercetin is a great anti-inflammatory and it would be great immune support for you to, to use it during this time. N-acetylcysteine. This is another fabulous supplement that you can use. Now, these are things your body makes, and that's why you get it from your food. Don't forget that, okay? Ricotta cheese, cottage cheese, yogurt, oat flakes, these are good source of N-acetylcysteine. N-acetylcysteine helps again in the formation of glutathione, which was the other mineral I asked you before that does the same thing. That was selenium. Selenium and the NAC both help the glutathione production, which helps to heal the lungs. So it's very important. I also use this in my liver detoxification powder. It helps the liver detoxify. Everything that we put into our body, our liver is the organ that works hard to remove everything and filter out everything. So having NAC in your diet is a great thing that you could do. It also helps as an expectorant, you know, when you are congested. Uh, so people with sinusitis, it'll make your mucus more easily come out. So it, it's used like that as well. Melatonin. Melatonin, everybody thinks about it as something that we use to help us sleep better. Yes, melatonin can do that. We produce melatonin naturally right? Uh, when the time is darker after the sun sets. It's a great antioxidant as well. So it helps to reduce inflammation. Good sources are tart, cherries, tomatoes, pomegranates, asparagus, olives, nuts and seeds, particularly walnuts, sunflower seeds, and flax seeds. If you decide to supplement with melatonin, I would always begin with a small dose, which is five milligrams. Some people have had a side effect of nightmares if they use melatonin. 
So I just want to bring that to your attention. Elderberry. Elderberry is a great immune supporting thing that you can use. It's packed with vitamin C. And this is a common thing we use in our household starting in October when the flu season begins because it's immune supportive, it has vitamin C. My boys are ready, they ask me, where is the jam, mommy? Because we buy the thick elderberry syrup and that's what I give them, uh, you know, teaspoon every night. So it's called Sambucus nigra. And actually you could even prepare this at home. You could uh, purchase elderberries and follow some recipes on YouTube and make it at your own home and use this. Green tea. Green tea is um, a great thing that you could use right now as well. Just like curcumin, this helps us in so many ways. The main thing in green tea is the EGCG. It's a long name, so I kind of call it EGCG. And this compound is the active component. And to receive 225 milligrams orally or daily, uh, you would need to drink four cups of green tea in a day. So I would say kind of spread this out, you know, have a cup of green tea. You know, besides its antioxidant properties, it also has L-theanine. L-theanine is, um, it works with your GABA. GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. So people who have anxiety, especially during this time, I ask them to have a cup of green tea. Add some honey to it if you like it sweet. And that'll help relieve the anxiety because we are in this uncertain time at this point. So this is a company I'm recently introduced to. So of course food is medicine, but if you do decide to buy some supplements, this is a good source in India, purenutrition.me, and they have these formulas that you can look into. All right, I hope you are there with me and finding this information helpful. I am moving along to the third Thing, which is lifestyle. Let's talk about stress. And I want to share this mechanism of how this is going to affect us. Okay, so please bear with me and pay attention. So when we are stressed out, we produce the hormone cortisol. We produce more than needed. And if this stress remains, if it becomes a chronic stress, then we are overproducing cortisol levels and that will affect our blood sugar balance. If our blood sugar is affected, it makes us prone to metabolic syndrome or diabetes. Now from then onwards, the inflammatory processes begin. If the blood sugar is high, it'll affect our arteries and the process of oxidation and atherosclerosis or plaque formation will begin. So this is all related. That's what I want to bring to your attention. When you have oxidation, if we come back to our cells, our cells each have mitochondria, which is the powerhouse of our cell. They cannot reproduce like they do. So there are mutations. If there are mutations in the cell, we know what happens. It forms tumors and that is how cancer happens. So I just want to share the link of how damaging it is, just the presence of stress in our life. Of course, we cannot avoid the stress, but what we can do about it matters. So I'm going to talk more about it, but I wanted to explain how the heart disease, diabetes, cancer, how these can happen, and the presence of comorbidities can make one more prone to this current pandemic. So let's work on our stress reducing techniques. So I want you to shift from a sympathetic to parasympathetic mode. Sympathetic mode is the flight, fight and flight. We are always on the go, right? I think this crisis has helped us slow down in a way, rethink about our priorities. We're so used to the flight and fight mode that this slowing down is not helping. 
but you want to put yourself into this parasympathetic mode so that you can heal so that you can reduce your stress so that you can help your gut health now meditation is a great practice and right now is the best time for you to learn meditation if you are not already doing that so many masters teachers are teaching it online via zoom so because we cannot change our external world we can change our internal world and meditation will help you do that bring more awareness how can we react to things how can we control our mind those thoughts are going to come but it is up to us how we respond to it how we act so it's important i'm going to share the simple exercise that i write about in my book as well it's called 478 breath meditation exercise what you do is you take inhale for a count of 4 you hold your breath for a count of 7 and then you breathe out for a count of 8 this stimulates your parasympathetic nervous system that's why it's important to do this exercise so if you're watching some news and you get affected and you know you get all stressed just practice this four times and this is going to help you four seven eight let's do it once together take a deep breath for a count of four two three four hold it for seven two three four five six seven two three four five six seven eight it's very easy four seven and eight please practice this four times in the morning four times of the in the evening or as much as you want it will quickly switch you from sympathetic to parasympathetic mode journaling is a great tool you can use this right now as a free flow of your thoughts you have the time right now to think about what you were doing all the time you were running from place to place was that satisfying for you if not write down why not what would you like to change going back to the normal world what is going to be the new normal what are the changes you want to make changes maybe in your career changes in your relationship so that is up to you but just use journaling as a method of stress reduction i mentioned this in my book and it has personally helped me a lot i've journaled a lot especially during stressful times of my life and when i've gone back and reflected it's shown me patterns and i found answers to what nobody could give me happy journaling social connection so even though you're enclosed in your own homes do not stop your social connection there is a study that says that social isolation in elderly is as harmful as smoking 15 cigarettes in a day yes we do need the company we do need each other but find the ones that relate to you you don't have to interact with everyone have that handful of people that you can just communicate that don't judge you don't make fun of the things you want to share but are there for you sleep sleep plays a big influence in your immune function so i told you about the t cells right the t cell activation are part of our adaptive immunity make sure you're getting good hours of sleep make sure you wake up rested if you are having disturbed sleep at night find some help for that there are many natural things you can do as well but sleep is very important i was reading reading a book that talked about how to overcome sleep debt so all the hours that you have lost in weeks of working so hard and you were not getting enough you could actually check into a hotel not right now but he was suggesting that in a book and just check in one weekend and just keep sleeping to overcome that i found that very interesting and if you're having difficulty sleeping you know have some nighttime routines that are going to help you maybe light a candle put some nice soothing sleep music have a cup of green tea again because that has l-theanine that is going to help you 
exercise. We know about exercise and its help as a stress buster. But this time, let's talk about its use in immune system. What exercise does is it raises the levels of the infection fighting white blood cells. And that's why get some movement. Even though you're at home, you could follow some videos online. There are many classes that are being offered. There are apps you could download and do it at your convenient time. There is no reason for not exercising. Okay, make sure you do that. And of course, if we keep moving, then we are not going to pack on those pounds in this time that we are stuck at home, which again will lead to chronic disease. So let's avoid that. All right, we come to this topic of immune immune system and our gut health. I'm just going to make sure how we are doing on time here. So there's a smile on my face because this is a very important topic again for me. I want to bring your attention to your gut. 80% of our immunity resides in our gut. The innate immunity that I talked about, the mucous membranes, our microbiome, which are all the organisms living in our gut, make that immunity. So your gut health is very important in ancient medicine, in naturopathic medicine, in Ayurvedic medicine. We do say that our disease begins in the gut. So if our gut is healthy, then we have a good immune system. The process of leaky gut, have you heard the term leaky gut? What happens is our intestinal lining has these cells and these tight junctions can get leaky and the toxic things can get into our bloodstream and cause an autoimmune reaction and inflammatory reaction. I specifically talk about the thyroid here because it can affect our thyroid gland and that's how Hashimoto's thyroiditis can happen. That's why I want to bring this to your attention. But first of all, autoimmunity is when our own immune function is affecting our own body and the organs. So to prevent that, we need to heal the gut. What does our gut love? Our gut loves the fiber, okay? So from vegetables, fruits, that are high in fiber, um, legumes, beans, those are great sources of fiber. In my practice, um, after doing the testing, I put my patients on the four-hour gut healing protocol to remove the things that shouldn't be there if they are overgrowing some bacteria, replacing it with things that are deficient. Maybe they are deficient in pancreatic enzymes. These are just examples. I want to restore what is deficient, maybe it's some of the probiotics that they're not using. And I usually tell patients don't buy probiotics off the shelf because maybe that organism is already overgrowing. So if you take that, you may have gas and bloating. So find out what you may be deficient and then consult with your doctor again. Repairing the gut. With presence of leaky gut, there is the damage in the cells and we have to repair that lining again. This is one of my favorite slides. And I could talk about this for an hour, but no, I won't do that. I want to get to your question sooner than later. But look at the tip of the iceberg. Those are the symptoms. And look at the depth of the ocean and the underlying causes. So when I say treat the cause, what do I mean? I'm gonna start with an example. If you are having high blood pressure and you go to see your doctor and they decide to put you on a medication, they start you probably on 10 milligrams of a medication, which is the right thing to do because you don't want to put the extra pressure on your heart. Uh, so you start using that medication. You're doing fine, you come back home, your blood pressure is good. Maybe in a month or two, again, your numbers are off. So you go back. Maybe you're put on 20 milligrams. Okay, you come back home, again, you are fine. All right, so pay attention, your symptoms are improving. Your blood pressure is getting under control. But are you healing from it? If you stop taking the medication, will your blood pressure be fine? No, that's why it's important to treat the underlying cause. The medication is helping you during that time. 
but you also have to work on the underlying cause of the disease. That is very important. And the cause is different for every person. We are all individuals. I talked about the process of chronic inflammation and how the plaque formation can happen from oxidation. There are different hormonal balances. Let me give you an example of one of my patients with the thyroid. So when the thyroid is slow, everything is slow in our body. Everything is processed slowly. So the liver is not working well enough to process all the lipids. And in patients who have hypothyroidism, their cholesterol tends to be high. When I do optimize their thyroid, everything tests normal again. So maybe the statin that they were put on was really not required. Just telling you why it's so important to treat the cause of the problem. Digestion, we just talked about healing the gut. Detox issues. So there are so many things. And my book is called The Seven Steps to Heal Your Thyroid because by layer by layer, we go and find out what the cause is for each person. Why is one having Hashimoto's thyroiditis? Why is one having hypothyroidism? The cause is different. Maybe they are lacking some nutrients. Maybe they have food sensitivities that is causing the inflammation. Maybe their gut lining is disturbed and they are having an overgrowth of bacteria. So the cause is different for each person and that is what we need to treat. Yes, the thyroid medication will help you with your symptoms, but treat the cause of your problem. That is very important. Okay, I'm going to give you some tips here. Um, I recommend that you practice the golden hour. Dedicate those 60 minutes in a day to yourself and only to yourself. You could do this first thing in the morning or you could spread it out during the day. So a total of 60 minutes, 20 minutes you dedicate to your body. Get some kind of exercise. Maybe you're doing jumping jacks, some push-ups, some YouTube video, Bollywood dance, whatever suits you. Move it, break a sweat. 20 minutes of meditation. Just sit down and watch your breath. Focus on your breath, and that is what you do. The thoughts will come, accept them, let them pass. Focus on your breath. 20 minutes, do that. And 20 minutes, do something that inspires you. For me, it's a lot of, lot of time, it's reading an inspirational book. Maybe for you, it's listening to a TED Talk on YouTube. But make sure you do that. Make sure you start doing this right now and continue that. Okay, and this is a nice resource uh, that I've created. I have a Facebook group called Feel Your Best Self. And if you want a print friendly version of this, just send me an email. I'll share my email address with you and I will send it to you. I want you to do this for two more weeks, just two more weeks. Make a printout of this. You just need two copies. Monday to Sunday, you want to start writing down from breakfast to dinner what exactly you're putting into your mouth. It just helps you make more conscious choices. After you've written down everything, I'm also going to ask you how you are feeling that day because the choices you make will reflect on your moods. So let please write down how you're feeling, how your moods are. You know, sometimes if you go long hours without eating, you may get angry, right? So make sure how you're feeling. Water intake. The usual recommendation is at least drink half of your weight in ounces. So if you weigh 150 pounds, then you at least drink 75 ounces of water. I encourage my patients to drink more. You could even have up to a gallon a day, but at least that much. That's why I say at least. Write down how many hours of sleep you got and did you wake up rested? Did you have any disturbed sleep? BMs are bowel movements. Yes, bowel movements are very important. They are a part of you. So what you put in, it, it's com it comes out and the consistency of it shows how your health is. Comes back to your gut. And practicing the golden hours. So check mark if you practice all the three things. 
this is a very easy exercise, but it's a very powerful tool. So I really want you to practice this for the next two weeks. Feel free to email it when you're done, and I'll be happy to give you my feedback. These are my supplements that uh, are manufactured here in the US and I use for my patients and are part of my treatment protocol. And I do offer teleconsulting worldwide. You can send an email to info at magnapacker.com and my team will be happy to respond to you. We'll take care of you. So thank you for listening. I will love to connect with you and stay in touch with you. Uh, you can even follow me on my Facebook page, Dr. Meghna Packer, and even on Instagram. And this is a picture of my book. Uh, it's available on Amazon in Kindle and uh, soft copy and the hardcover. So with this, uh, thank you very much. I would love to be able to answer some of the questions that have come in. Uh, Dr. Meghna, can yes. you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Dr. Sujit. Okay, now coming from someone who is with an allopathic background, let me tell you that this uh, talk has been incredibly an eye-opener for me because trust me, I do not follow the golden hour rule at all. And uh, I, I attribute it to my being extremely busy. And at this age, when I am almost turning 50, I now realize that I am lacking a lot of energy and maybe I don't want to get uh, uh, diabetes or heart conditions at this age. So trust me, I'm going to do what you have recommended. And I'm going to take up on your uh, uh, telephonic consultation, okay? So you're going to get my call very soon. Great. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, yeah. so there are a few questions uh, the participants have posted. So I'm going to give you a quick, uh, you know, a recap for that. Uh, uh, Mrs. Uma has said, what is the role of fasting in naturopathy? If you can elaborate on that. Absolutely. So even intermittent fasting is a common method that has been used. And what fasting does is actually gets us into the fat burning mode because we get our nutrition from the macronutri macronutrients like protein, carbohydrates, and fats. So usually our energy um, is used from our carbohydrates, but when we go longer hours without eating, then we are able to burn fat. And that's why some people are able to lose weight when they do fasting. And fasting is done in many cultures in different ways, you know, uh, we go, there. there's a month-long fasting, some cultures do it for a week, so it has its therapeutic effects in that way too. It's a great detox for your body as well. It helps your body to get rid of things that it doesn't need. And our fat cells basically hold the toxins, so if we are burning fat, we are eliminating those toxins. Great. Thank you so much, doctor. Uh, next question, what is... Uh... Uh, if your serum insulin is high, what recommendations does naturopathy have? So that's a good question. And uh, I believe in an integrative approach in treatment plan. So you work with your endocrinologist and with a naturopathic doctor. We use different herbs. It could be a combination of gymnema, which is an Indian herb. We use fenugreek, which is methi. We use chromium as a mineral that helps the blood sugar balance. So usually all the treatments are individualized per, for the patient. Okay. So you basically use a combination of herbs, uh, diet, lifestyle, a lot of different things encompasses that. Okay. I think this is from a very concerned mother. How do you balance taste and immunity with a child? So I guess you need to have another book. That Absolutely. <laughs> I, know. I, I agree. I need to have a recipe book now, I think. You, you know? really should. That's okay. very interesting. Yes, <laughs> I'm inspired to do that, I have to say. So absolutely, you know, to 
my kids love these uh, fruits, you know, and from a young age, I've introduced like blueberries and strawberries and all of that. But sometimes to make it interesting, I tell them, let's have chocolate blueberries or chocolate strawberries. You can have a healthy form of chocolate too. What I do is I combine the almond butter and chocolate for them, you know, so they have the cocoa powder with the almond butter. So they're getting their protein, they're getting their fat along with the fruit. So that's a gr good way of doing it. That is one recommendation, but there can be many. I have to write a book. Works for me. I love chocolate. Okay, another question is, how much time does it take for you to recover from a vitamin D or a B12 deficiency? And a veggie for, especially for a vegetarian. Very good question. So um, the B12 is usually present in meats, you know. So for vegetarians, usually, I recommend some amount of a B complex or B12 anyways on a regular basis. So you're, even if you test high on a blood serum test, because B12 is a water soluble vitamin, you'll never have any toxic dose of it, okay? But for vitamin D, actually, you could potentially have a toxic load. So it's very important to do the blood work regularly with your doctor to make sure that you are in a good range. And for some people, it can change uh, with their diet or by supplementation within one to three months. And for some people, they have to use it long-term. So it just depends how much sunlight they're getting, how they're metabolizing the vitamin D from that, if they're getting it from their food sources, et cetera. Okay, so the next question is along the same lines, which is the best day to be exposed to sunlight to get vitamin D, according to you? Best day? Best time in the day, sorry. Best time in the day. Okay, so um, I would say it, it depends, you know, the morning time is a good time, I would think, or evening. You know, you don't want to be in direct sunlight when it's too bright either. Like, you know, you want to avoid the harsh rays and be exposed to that and other bad effects from that. So morning or evening would be a better time. Lovely. Uh now we've got some very incredible questions also which are coming our way. We still have about a few minutes, so I'm going to take on all the questions. Great. Uh, next question is, is it okay to take spices if you are taking naturopathic medicine? Spices intake with naturopathy. And I know where this is coming from. This is coming from a homeopathic uh, point of view where, you know, when you take homeopathic medicine, they recommend you don't take certain, uh, uh, you know, food stuff like coffee. So I think this is the same line, Dr. Mehta. Absolutely. And you know, the views can differ from practitioner to practitioner, but certain spices are important. I want to point out this very important thing. I think I probably did not mention it or forgot to mention it during the presentation, but when you use haldi, it's very important that you combine that with black pepper. The reason being that it increases the bioavailability of curcumin by 2000%. So that is very important. But with that said, the spices help in their own way, like stimulate the digestion or our digestive juices. And we want that going to digest our foods, absorb our foods, assimilate our foods. So they definitely have a role to play. But if you are working with a homeopathic doctor um, for that time being, do follow their guidelines. Lovely. Uh, next question. Another very interesting uh, question, especially with the vegan uh, uh, you know, a wave that's coming in. What is your take on vegan food? People who don't take milk, egg, or honey. Would you recommend vegan or not, Dr. Bingham? Yes, I think every person is different. And uh, there are people who have different food sensitivities, uh, especially to lactose, milk products. So for them, a vegan diet would be great. And I do think that you can get a balanced diet. For example, like I'll give you an example of my uh, detox protein drink. It's composed of pea and rice protein. So it's a vegan-based protein drink. But when you combine the pea protein with the rice protein, then it gives you all your essential amino acids, 100% of that. So yes, you know, with that said, you can have a balanced uh, macronutrient perspective in your diet uh, if you follow a vegan diet. Lovely. I would love to... Uh... 
uh, find out where we'll get this protein for because especially for a vegetarian like me and I would not want to have whey protein, the rice protein and pea protein, as they say, is the best digestive protein. So I'd love exactly. to know where to get it in India. Uh, having said that, which is the best cooking oil would you recommend? And how do you like to detox? Great. <laughs> the cooking oil that I use uh, exclusively for all the high heat foods in my house is avocado oil because it will not oxidize at higher temperatures. And our Indian food, we do need to cook on high temperatures. If I'm making a salad, I will use an extra virgin olive oil. But there are other uh, good oils to choose from, but those are the ones that I recommend. I also use ghee you know, and the beneficial uh, fat that we get from it is very important. So whenever I'm making dosa or my dals, I always add homemade ghee. Lovely. I would say that ghee is one of the best uh, options. Uh, another very interesting question. What is the best natural medication for a person who is prone to allergic cold or allergic rhinitis? Okay, that again depends from person to person. In naturopathic medicine, since we have so many tools in our toolbox, you know, we actually individualize it. But some of the herbs that help uh, could be echinacea, the stinging nettles, uh, quercetin. Those are some good things that help the allergic reaction. And it naturally helps, uh, you know, the histamine reaction basically, rather than using histamine suppressing medications. Yes. Right. So I'm going to, there are last two questions I'm going to take. So I'm going to push in my question in here. Otherwise I will not be able to get an answer to that. And I'm a dentist. Okay. And a lot of patients come to me and the first thing they say are they are extremely apprehensive, scared, anxious. These are the terms that they use when they come to me, not the best terms that I would like to hear. But does naturopathy have any medication to handle anxiousness and apprehension? One, do you have something that I can give for pain in case there's pain? And the third, is there something that naturopathy can offer to help in healing post-surgery? Now, this is my question. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. So let me try to go in order. Okay. So anxiety. Yes. Um, so, you know, one of the things I mentioned is the teas. The green tea has L-theanine. So what we are trying to achieve is the inhibitory neurotransmitter, you know, to support that, like the GABA production. So G-A-B-A, -A, GABA is available as a supplement as well. Kava Kava is another tea that can be used. Chamomile tea is another tea that can be used. There are some back flower remedies, which are the flower essences, and they have a nice combination called rescue remedy, which is available in lozenges as well, that uh, helps to take off that edge. So homeopathy has a great collection of um, anti-anxiety remedies. So I would even recommend working with your homeopath uh, for that reason especially in this time when even people are anxious with the COVID and the uncertainty with that. In regards to pain and the healing uh, along with it, um, especially uh, Dr. Sujit, you being a dentist, I know they say holding a club in your mouth, you know, and the oils that it generates could be one of the natural things that people could do. Also using Arnica homeopathically, something like a 30C that can be used even before the procedure and after the procedure, it'll help with the pain and also with the healing. Curcumin is another thing, haldi, like uh, that will act as an anti-inflammatory and help the pain and healing. Lovely. Thank you so much, Dr. Meghna. One last question, where most of us are uh, having this question. What is the difference between naturopathy and Ayurveda? Or is there a difference? Okay, sure. So you know what attracted me to the naturopathic medicine program in the US because it's all encompassing like the different modalities. Okay, so actually I'm trained in the conventional route, prescribing drugs and can prescribe that as well as 
trained in all the natural methods, which include botanical medicine, it includes um, acupuncture, it includes homeopathy. So as a naturopathic doctor, you have many tools that will help you. Now, Ayurvedic medicine is focused on botanical medicine and has the philosophy of the three doshas, you know, the herbs are the same, the plants are the same, they have different names, uh, you know, the Latin version, you know, besides the, the Indian one? and the Sanskrit names, but uh, the, the herbs are powerful. So I always suggest that you know, one works with a practitioner who understands that before using any of them. Just because it's natural doesn't always mean that it's safely used in different amounts. Thank you, Dr. Meghna. Uh, I'm going to yeah. now not take any more questions because if we do that, we're going to take much, much more time. I'd like to thank you for a wonderful, wonderful lecture. I'm going to uh, transfer the proceedings to Sonali, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your patience and for letting us get all the answers to the questions that we have. Over to you, ma'am, to wind up the session. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Meghna Thakkar. You have presented a wealth of information, beneficial to our health, but in the simplest manner and with the most practical tips to enhance our sense of well-being. Uh, in appreciating your uh, suggestions to combat stress, in fact, I'm inclined to say to disallow stress from affecting us. I can't help but point out and once again appreciate Mr. Sujay Jairaj in providing us with these webinars that have helped us so much by focusing on what is really beneficial to us rather than being overwhelmed by the stress of things around which are beyond our control. I'm digressing. Back to mentioning about Dr. Meghna Thakkar, you always share your knowledge and information and experience so generously. I say it firsthand because I follow your videos on Facebook regularly. I've been able to tweak little aspects of my thought process and the behavior patterns based on what you have always shared, like I said, very generously. Um, I know one of the questions that popped up from our attendees was about what books would you recommend to uh, suggest, you know, what books would you recommend for inspirational reading? And I'd like to take the liberty of answering that for our attendee by saying, do yourself the favor, go follow Dr. Meghna Thakkar online on her social media. Uh, I've actually begun to factor that in on my journaling to indicate how I have spent my golden hour. It's been tremendously beneficial for me. So your knowledge and remedies uh, are so widespread, I'm sure our attendees realize, Dr. Meghna Thakkar, I speak on their behalf, that we are so grateful to you for having been able to offer us, one person being able to offer us what a diverse number of speakers would probably have in different talks. The way you have made everything so comprehensively uh, available for us is simply remarkable. We are very grateful for that. But above everything else, I must convey the pride that every Jamnabai Nursi uh, family member has in you, our alumna, who's doing so well in Arizona. Why just Arizona? The world over with the kind of reach technology has today. Thank you so much, Dr. Bopardikar, for being such a wonderful moderator. Your twinkling eye and your smile adds to the pleasantness of the way in which you have comprehensively guided the direction that this uh, talk took us through. Thank you to everyone who participates directly or indirectly in making these webinars possible. Have a wonderful day up ahead, people. Look out for the details for Wednesday's webinar, which we require you to be in workout clothes for, as our alumnus, Karan Sani, is going to take us through home workouts. Karan is someone who's played professional football for India, uh, for Kerala Blasters. So please do look out for those links and uh, hope you can join us in large numbers. Thank you once again to all the faces I see here as panelists. Have a great day ahead.